oxygen. No, no, you're, you're lucky. There's no such thing as that. There's worse things. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and where did we get lucky at? <laughs> you don't learn them in this class. <laughs> That's next semester. It is. Do not teach in 4B. <laughs> okay, derivative of tan x. What's a derivative of tan x? Secant squared x. Okay, this would be pretty pain I mean painless. <laughs> now this one's pretty easy. That means what's the integral of secant squared x? Tan x. I like the plus c. I heard it. Plus c. <laughs> By the way, uh, look at the board here real quick. Is it plus c like this? No. No. It's actually plus c like this. Okay. Whatever the angle is, and then the plus c is the very, very end. <clears throat> okay, three more. Well, let's see if you remember this one. Um, hmm. Do you remember, and I'm going to change this, so don't get too excited yet. The derivative of cotangent. Negative cosecant tangent. Negative cosecant cotangent. Yes, negative cosecant. If, if tangent is secant, cotangent is cosecant. Yeah, squared. <coughs> With a negative. With a negative in front of it. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'll bet you can, you can see it. It's the same thing I'm going to do over here. All right, same thing I did over here. If I have cotangent, the derivative of cotangent gives me negative cosecant. What I want this to be is positive cosecant. So look what I can do. I can say, okay, if cotangent gives me negative cosecant, negative cotangent should give me positive cosecant squared. Are you still okay with that one? So I'm just moving negatives around, basically. And the reason is because I want to have my cosecant here to be positive. I don't want to have the negative cosecant in there. So what's the integral of cosecant squared x? Negative cosecant. Yeah, it's that. The integral has to undo that derivative. Plus e, plus e. Don't forget plus e. Two more. Secant. See, do you know secant? Some on the right side. Do you know secant? Secant. Right, right side, right side, right side. <laughs> Middle. Secant. Yes. Yeah, some work to do. <laughs> right side. <coughs> By the way, don't forget that x. It's not secant tangent x, it's secant x. Tangent x, secant x times tangent x. So this is like this. Well, then what's the integral of secant x tangent x? If you know this one, you can pretty much figure this one out. It has a negative, but you can pretty much figure this one out. Yeah. Make flashcards up. Make flashcards up or something. You need these. You ever done flashcards before? There's these like cards that you flash. Not like blinker flash. You run the back side. And go, integral of integral of secant tangent. <coughs> Secant squared. Oh, yeah. No. Well, make sure you have them. You also probably know what I'm going to do with this one. I don't want that negative there. I want the negative here. So 
If cos the derivative of cosecant gives you negative cosecant cotangent, then the derivative of negative cosecant gives you positive cosecant cotangent. So I'm going to change that around. That way I have the integral of cosecant x cotangent x. dx, don't forget the dx, is negative cosecant x plus c. Isn't that fun? Isn't that cool? That's no, not too bad. Here's the, here's the bright side. Yeah, the, the bad side is this stuff sucks, right? I mean, this is hard to memorize, especially these four. These ones, not so bad. This is easy. This is easy. This is pretty easy because you deal with sine and cosine more often. This is okay. You know what You know what people mess up? I guarantee you, you know where people mess up, where you're going to mess up if you make a mistake. Where are you going to mess up? Sine. The signs. The sign. Positive and negative. All the time. Because you're used to doing this. Just think about it. Think about it for a second. If the derivative of sine is cosine, the integral of sine can't. You can't have the same thing both ways, right? The derivative of the sine can't be cosine, and the integral of sine be cosine. Something has to change there. So here, the integral of sine, yeah, it's negative cosine. The reason is the derivative of cosine would give you negative sine, so the derivative of negative cosine would give you positive sine. You can think through it, but it's harder. People make most of the mistakes with sines almost all the time. That's where, where all of it happens, especially that stuff. The bright side is if it does not fit in this table, you can't do it right now. I'm going to show you one exception to that. One, just one. Um, it's, a, it's called integration by substitution. It's very easy. But again, what you get must fit in this table. If it doesn't fit, you can't do it. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing because if it's out of our realm, you won't even come up with it, so you know you're going to have an answer. It's a bad thing because sometimes it's hard to make things fit. And so I'm going to show you some examples on this, uh, but memorize these tables. I'm going to need to erase them. Are there any questions before we begin? Did you see how I got all of them? Basically, just undoing derivatives is the whole idea of integrals. That's why it's called an anti-derivative. So those are going to be all the answers on the test and write down the board. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Nice try. Good try, Renee. <coughs> okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not giving you that one anymore. We, we dealt with that one four times. How about this one? <laughs> the integral of x to the fourth dx, does it fit your table? Yes. yes. That's something to a power that fits your table. That's why I gave it to you this way. What are you going to do with this? Subtract or add? Yeah, add. Multiply or divide? divide? You're basically then doing a derivative. So instead of multiplying and then subtracting, you are adding and then dividing. So on our answer here, you're going to have x to the what? Yeah. Five. Yes, that's right. You add one. You add and then divide by what? Five. Five. Is it going to be right as one-fifth x? Sure. Okay. Yeah, in fact, I think your book often writes it as one-fifth x. You know it's the same thing, though, right? Yeah. x to the fifth over five or one-fifth x. And then plus. don't you forget that plus c. Ooh, let's try this one. Notice how I have to always write my dx, right? If you don't have that, it's not a good way to write an integral. You're missing something. Does that fit your table? Yeah. <coughs> not quite. Here's what you can't, what you can't do. You can't do this. You can't go, oh, Plus <laughs> Not so much. Plus C. Oh, yeah, now you're right. Now, no problem now. Yeah. Could you break the quotient rule by just doing the derivative of the top, or the, the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom? You can't do that. You can't do that. You had a quotient rule for that, right? Well, we don't have things like the quotient rule, but note, this is what I said to you earlier, it must fit your table precisely. I don't have anything in my table. One, nothing. There's nothing one over that. Is there? Make it a negative. Make it x to the negative 3. That would fit my table. This new, new, oh dear. This is true. Yes. Make it fit your table. That's what you got to do. So x to the negative 3, hey, now we have x to some power. Now we can do it. Just be careful when I say add, I do mean add. I don't mean get x to the negative 4. 
because that would be subtracting, right? If we're adding to that, you're going to get x to the negative, negative two. Negative two, very good. Over what? Over negative two. That's what you're getting, over negative two. Yes, of course, because you take it over your new x score, negative two plus c. You might make this a little bit prettier. You can do negative one half. You can do negative uh, one over two x squared plus c, which is probably the, the most appropriate way to write that. Do you see that? This goes down, that stays there, negative goes up. You okay with this so far? Any one of those would be acceptable. This is most acceptable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, by the way, could you check your work? Hey, what checks your work? Derivative. Duh. I mean, yeah. You should never get the wrong answer. You can always check your work. Unless you do it really hard on the rules. But most of the time, you can check your work. Right? All the time you can. It just gets more difficult. But here with these easy ones, man, you should never get one wrong. You should never get one wrong. Somehow Some of you will. Yeah. Somehow we will find a way. <laughs> Okay, is that in your table? Make it fit your table. What do you do? So we got it. X to the one half. What do you do with the x coordinate? You add or subtract? With integrals, you add. So we're going to get what's one plus one half? Is it one? It's three halves. So x to the three halves. Over, this is why I do the over so you can really see this, over three halves, right? Over three halves. You got me? So that's x to the three halves over one divided by three halves. If you, I'm, I'm never, never going to do this again, but you can see it this way. x to the three halves over one over three halves. Reciprocate and multiply. What you end up getting is 2x to the three halves over three. I ran out of room, sorry. Plus C. Plus C. You notice a couple things about this. Firstly, did I put the plus C right when I did the problem? Yeah. Not really. We only need the very end. Just the very end. You can ignore it as long as you don't forget about it altogether. Put it at the very end. Also, could you check this with the derivative? Well, let's see. Derivative says you multiply by that. Hey, there goes the two thirds. Subtract one from it. There's the one half. The c's gone because c's a constant, right? Derivative of a constant is zero. That's the correct answer. That's what we need to be getting. Ready for one more? I'm not supposed to do this one. I'll go. Mm -hmm. What do you do first? Yes. Now play along. When you do this, you get, I'm going to do every step for you. You get x to the negative 1 plus 1 over negative 1 plus 1. Right? You get x to the 0 over Zero, you get one, oh, oh crap, you get oh crap. Why, why, why oh crap? You can't. So when you see this, can you actually do it? This right here is something out of the, uh, out of the realm of this class. We, we do late transcendentals, we do uh, 